Well, it is August 2023, and a few years ago, I thought about buying a new four-wheel drive to go off-road in. Now, the interesting thing about that is it didn't work out the way I thought in any way. In fact, it's almost been three years on now, and it's a completely different thing. Because today, this is still my main off-roader. I sold the Fortuna, and I went and bought this. I'm going to show you how that all happened and why. It all starts this video from Ronnie Dahl. So this video came out uh, at the end of 2020 and it was around about the time when our channel was um, at its most busiest i guess uh, of all its time we were getting a few subscribers a day uh, we we're getting questions and comments a lot of kind of movement was occurring on our channel and we were deciding to kind of try uh, harder things and at the time it was just my adventurer and will's 90 series prado and you probably remember our intro back then i'll play it now so you can see it This is All Terrain Action. It's actually funny, I haven't seen that intro in quite a while, but um, that was, yeah, that was a video intro we had. And uh, around about this time, uh, we, were, we were on a track that we'd done at night. And what had happened was I was, I was four driving. Um, we had a few issues. I had to get Will to try and winch me out of an awkward position. And he unfortunately blew his rear diff in the process. And we had so many dramas in trying to get uh, Will's vehicle back home. The adventurer started towing it. It was a bit of a nightmare. Here's a bit of a clip of from that from that video itself. You kind of understand um, what we're dealing with. We were so unequipped back then. Um, we had the mental capacity, but just we weren't carrying the right things and didn't really have the right vehicles. Accelerating my car. Yeah, that makes sense. You're pulling. You're actually speeding me up. We're on the main road now. This is the main road, it just takes us straight back into Nuji. Okay. Look at that. Oh, well, this one on the main road. Yeah. Out of that mess. I'm like, so, well, are you sure this is right? It doesn't look good, does it? Didn't it got worse suddenly. Yeah. But then he was like, it says main road on the map, so don't lie to us, Ema. So, long story short, um, about a month later, after we went through all this and after getting Will's car fixed, we thought about how do we prevent this situation from happening again. Um, none of our cars could really tow a car trailer that could pull a four-wheel drive on top of it. There was a whole lot of other stuff we had to think about. Um, our onboard tools, what, what gear we had to fix things, spares, etc. So I went out to Toyota and I bought a brand new Toyota four-wheel drive. Now, it was because I'd seen Ronnie's video, I thought, hey, look, it's a great hybrid tourer, um, real four-wheel drive, as they call it, with dual-range box, rear lockers, factory, and I thought, why not? Let's do this. But I didn't really think it through all too much, um, and I think that, I mean, you'll see in this video here, I don't even really know what I'm buying and what for. It's, it was just more because people were telling me this was um, the better way forward. But didn't it? Somehow did it. I don't know how. I just did it. After that weekend, I thought, well, we need a vehicle that we can have trust in. And that made me walk and think and ended up buying 
this. So this is, uh, well, we only got this about a month and a bit ago, and it's a current model, this year's model, Toyota Fortuna. Uh, I only, I mean, I got it, we got it brand new, yeah. Um, I think the end of July it was, yeah. And I've already gone ahead and started modding it and doing some basic stuff, not, not making it crazy off-road, just making it support, you know, aiding, aiding off-road for our off-road vehicles. And uh, so far we've put, well, so you can see there, I don't even really know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm not even sure what I'm trying to tell you guys. And in the end, look, we had this vehicle for two and a half years, I think it was. It went to Simpson Desert, did a couple of trips. Uh, every time I went camping, I wasn't sure which car to take. I ended up taking two cars. Um, and then our two cars plus another two or three cars from other people in our group. And sometimes this car would actually get left back at camp. Um, other times I'd have to choose whether I want to go in this car or that car. Uh, after a couple of years of doing this, I got really bored of the Fortuna and then not too long after that when I finally decided you know what um, the Fortuna is only really good when I want to go out with people I don't know because people that I don't know wouldn't go out with me in the adventurer because they wouldn't trust the adventurer so the only way to really get out and socialize was to become one of you guys I guess and only when you guys kind of go oh hey look Chris has actually got a full drive We'll go out for driving with him and that's how we ended up um, in this situation because i started going out um, instead of with people to kind of um, like get more experience myself i actually ended up going out with people who had less experience wanting to learn from me and that kind of was kind of crazy because i didn't realize that i had that influence on other people in the community and then this day came along um, when i was out one day and you'll see now that ended shortly. You've probably seen the video, but here it is again. <sighs> I felt bad watching Chris work on my car. <laughs> Usually uh, I'm I, working I on my car. It. But I, I it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do much any, any time out, so. <laughs> <laughs> <It's on. laughs> I can throw a rock or something. <laughs> Alright, Chris, you're gonna have to stop the vehicle. I think you must have a look at this bit first. Oh, okay. Never mind. Kevin will be directly behind the car in case he starts to slide. Just break your car. I think the front diff might have just sound like the front diff just It smells like front it smells like diff oil. I think you I think you blew your diff. Very work on this left hand side. Yeah. Uh, has that CV popped out completely? CV. Oh, yeah. CV. CV? Yeah. Completely popped out. Oh, yeah. uh, let me try and get back up. If I go forward, does it turn? Careful. If I go forward? No, no. It's not turning. Watch out. I'm just going to try and get up. Three diff lock, maybe? Ah, because I need to be full low for that. Give me a sec. I don't think he should keep going. I think he's going to blow something else. 
Can you um pop my bonnet? Are you gonna winter? Yeah, I'll have to winter. And for those who aren't really familiar with our channel or this particular video in question, um, this was a trip I was on with a bunch of other four-wheel drivers. We had two adventurers. My one was about four cars behind here, and I had Will driving that, and Will had his adventurer. A couple of D-Maxes. I think we had another Fortuna. And, um, oh, we had a Hilux too, I think, as well. Uh, we might have also had a Jeep. Um, I think it was a Wrangler that was with us as well. And 36 degrees today, guys so hot um we're in the middle of a track with with not like no real um plan to how to rectify the two situations here the first situation being the d-max behind the fortuna you can see here um had done a front diff and a rack end um and now you see here my fortuna with my front cv which had actually had popped out of the cv housing so it wasn't actually snapped in the end it was just popped out because we later repaired this at the top of the track so we could continue the trip but unfortunately the d-max behind us ended up getting picked up by admiral towing and getting pulled back um, up to the cola but in the end it's more this is just kind of crazy to me um and was, was the last what well, was the last thing i thought that would happen given that i'd traverse this track many many times in adventure up and down um sometimes at really bad times of the year sometimes at really good times of the year and never really had this problem we've actually never ever done a cv out on a track with the adventurer in all the seven years that i've been forward driving in it so for all this to just kind of come about like this was just crazy our objective at this point now is we wanted to get um the d-max behind me pulled up to the side of the track and try and make way so we could get all the other people um, that were waiting at the bottom, up the track to the top where they shade. It was just too hot. We had to think of a plan. This this all kind of rolled out uh, late morning, and we didn't get to the top of the track until, I would say, late evening, um, around about 4 or 5 o'clock, so it was a very long day. And it was pretty much the last straw for me, especially when I found out um, what comes up next. So, Well, guys, uh, Fortuna came back <clears throat> from Toyota today. It looks like, well, we're in for a bit of adventure. So they just for everyone's um, understanding, Toyota have zero responsibility at all in terms of what happens to the CVs and stuff like that. Especially, you know, obviously after you're an aftermarket lift. Um, this is only, I think it's like only 30 or 40 mils of lift. It's the smallest lift I could get with um, TJM. And... Pretty much what they're saying is if they replace it, that it's probably going to break again. Uh, something to do with the design, it's just the way it is. They're not tested uh, for anything more than what, what they come factory. So what's actually now happening, it looks like, is this potentially, this vehicle might disappear on the channel. There's no, there's no point at the CV fix if it, and this is going to happen again. Uh, and I don't even know what Fortuna owners are doing that are getting more than... 30 or 40 mils of lift. They must be doing something crazy or not really going forward driving. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. And I do get it. Um, I guess since I've been forward driving in the adventure for seven years and never ever done a CV, um, it wasn't, I guess, common knowledge to me that forward drivers with um, independent suspension, they go through front CVs regularly when they go off-roading, off-roading. Now, I don't know how true that is or how wide that is to particular brands or models, but um, the consensus is that I've learnt that if you're going forward driving, um, you bring spare CVs. I guess that makes sense. Um, I guess it just didn't make sense to me at the time because I'd been forward driving in the adventure for so long that this was never a problem for us. And we went through much tougher, um, more harder and more aggressive tracks and never, ever had an issue. So I guess... Um, that leaves me to say that I just did not connect well with the four-wheel drive. Um, I'm sure there's, you know, I could go look at older four-wheel drives and get full full solid axle um, setups, and there's all sorts of stuff that I could could go do. But now that I've just done it a little bit, I'm decided I'm just going to stick with my adventure for as long as um, as long as I possibly can, I guess, and keep modifying it. Uh, keep building it and building other adventurers and supporting anyone and everyone who wants to drive whatever they want. 
finding those limits, uh, pushing those boundaries. So with the money that we spent on the Fortuna, I thought, well, let's use that money and buy a pod camper. And the two that stood out to us were um, the Jayco J-Pod or the truck trailer T-Van. Different ends of the world in cost, um, but one being the truck trailer I've always wanted and two, the pod, which kind of is the right shape, right weight and ticks most of the main boxes except for integrity for off-road. In the end, we went for the truck trailer, which many of you on our channel would know by now. And so far, it's been great. Well, as we all know, we're moving the Fortuner on. How do you feel about that, kids? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what they said five seconds ago. They're like, why are we selling it, Dad? So, if we go with if we go with the pot idea, the kids will get to sleep in the back of our main adventurer, and we'll have the little pod caravan behind the adventurer for our trip, which we can actually leave at camp and go uh, all wheeling, four wheeling with the adventurer and everyone. Ultimately, one of the issues are with Fortuna is it's expensive to own. It's probably like any new four wheel drive. If you're going to take it off road, things are going to get damaged. Like it's been very hard to keep this car the way it looks now. It actually looks almost new, doesn't it, kids? Yeah. Like we've been able to, after a good yeah. clean up, even the body, it's in immaculate condition for what it, for where it's been and what it's done. So one of the one of the cons, four wheel drive, new four wheel drive, you've got to keep them maintained. If you don't wash them all the time and polish them, when you take them off road, mud will actually stain the white paint. There's all sorts of stuff. You just don't. You don't want to do it. You're scared to not actually maintain it. And so I've, I've over maintained it. I mean, I've got the air filter changed in every service in this car. And it's not needed. It's like an extra $100 on top of the Toyota Advantage service. Some of the pros for a new four-wheel drive, from Toyota anyway, it was $250 a service every um, 10,000 Ks, which I think was pretty cool, given how much stuff goes in. It looks like you save yourself about $250. It's about $500 a service. It actually shows you how much you save on there. Downside is you lift them, um, it reduces your warranty. I mean, you don't get warranty on your suspension because it's been modified. Other issues, parts and repair. I mean, with the CV issue that we had, that we had to get fixed uh, for the new buyer, fifteen hundred dollars. Easier to get, more expensive. Um, that's just one issue. The other second issue is Toyota don't want you touching anything. You know, and that's probably with any new new four drive. They don't want you touching anything on the car. You touch it, boy, it's warranty. For us, we're hands on. We are home mechanics. We we just we like to fix our things ourselves. If an adventurer did a CV on the side of the track, it's not a hard thing. It do, it doesn't cost that amount of money. For a genuine OEM CV, five hundred fifty dollars. Okay, I can get an adventurer CV for probably about fifty bucks and I can rebuild it for probably another $10, uh, maybe $20 with the boots. And maybe, and I could do the front CV in about 20 minutes on my own with, with a couple of sockets, 30, a 36, um, a 36, a couple of 12 and 13 mil bolts, and uh, a 21 and 19. I'm just thinking of all the stuff I've got to pull off. And I can have it off in about 15 minutes and put it all back together just as quick. Um, it's, and that's just one example. There's so many other things. So for what we do, it makes sense to have an adventurer as a main off-roader. I mean, I was constantly challenged time after time. Do I take the adventurer? Do I take the Fortuner? There's some trips where I did the day trips. Do I take the adventurer? Do I take the Fortuner? Me, I kept taking the Fortuner because it's like, well, I have this car. We've got it up to spec. It's for off-road. should be using it. But in the, the day, not as happy taking it out. And that day where this actually broke down, I felt so comfortable and so at home doing that whole recovery trip on my own, doing the loop back to Dargo, getting extra fuel, picking up, uh, dropping people off back at the main road, then coming in on a four-wheel drive track I've never been on, coming in reverse. I've been on it going one way, but not the other. The adventure, just, it just I just felt safe. I would have been so worried in the Fortuna, I think, being that I'm in the middle of nowhere, trying to get back somewhere, and all I had was a sat phone. Um, so if something went wrong, that would be what I have to do. But at least if something happened in the adventure, I could pull over, pull out all my tools, look at what's going on, and I have spares on board. Probably could have spares on board for this, but 
unless I know how to change something or if I run into a problem or don't have the right size spanner or socket or the right type of deep socket, like these things will get you stranded on the side of a track. Who are you kidding yourself? Where are you putting them? There's no room. And there's no room. Like there's no room in, in this Fortuna. Even if I've got a Prado, there's even not much more room. I had a look in a 300 series at Toyota. There's a there's a bit more room because the floors are all in the, like the seats are all in the ground and stuff, but still not that much more room. Like Adventra just ticks a lot of boxes and it's cheap. Cheap. They are ten thousand dollars for a decent Adventra, five thousand in mods. That's lift, dual battery, um oh, maybe six thousand with tires I suppose. And that goes most places. It, it's yeah, it's I'd, so many things but look at least I, I tried it um, it hasn't worked out they're, they're great for a, a road car <laughs> I mean being having a bigger an actual taller car on the road is actually is actually good but yeah it's it's not for me so anyway we're at the shops now so I'm uh, gonna park and head on in catch you guys later and for those who might be interested about the Black Duck seat covers, here's a quick review from me uh, for the 50,000 Ks I own the new Zoom. Black Duck seat covers. Um, I actually started pulling the fronts off, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you guys how much these actually keep the, the vehicle tidy and clean. Like, these are my factory seats. Um, leather seats. I've been, you've been seeing, you've seen what I've been before. About to take this one off, I mean, it looks pretty much new as anything. So these have actually never been taken off and washed in the 40,000 Ks. Well, 50,000 Ks almost these have been on the car. So it'd be interesting once you pull them all off, what it actually looks like, especially after seeing the first one. Uh, here we go. From that side. Pretty good. Nice. Here we go, guys. Just out of Pro Shine, looking good as always. Ready for the new owner. Just got the uh, rebar all tidied up. Looks spectacular. As always, a Pro Shine, never a problem. New owner will love it. Um, so it's just off to go get roadworthy now. And uh, won't be long before it's out of my hands, really. So. Oh, look, I don't think I made a video yet, but I cleaned up the entire inside of the car, removed the car seat covers, it's come up really well. So, pretty much a new four wheel drive tour ready. All right, time to get back home. Let me give it a go. Um, flip it around a one. All right, guys. This is actually a good little. This is a good little spot to see if I can drive the camper. Drive the camper. Because the troopy can't get up this. This will be a good spot to test to see if I can get the camper up this with the adventurous. I'm going to loop it around and give it a go. It's going to make it dirty. It's Here we go. <laughs> so the answer to that is yes, it will pull it up there. No worries. <laughs> it didn't even straight up it. No, no issues at all, it's just no, it straight up. You should have seen, I actually, I actually started sinking when I did the U-turn. I'm like, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. And I'm like, highway pressures. This should be interesting. You knew what it would make it, didn't you? It's hard. <laughs> you, 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 made, you, made, you made a good bit of a mess of it, that's for sure. Yeah, look, you just, you just stepped up that. No worries. Yeah, you the step. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How did the camper handle just go... Beautiful. I don't know how good those eggs are. I'm be. happy about the camper. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well.
<laughs> so is the orbiter. Yeah, let's get Think out of here. Think about shaking a leg before this rain comes down any further. I feel like I'm operating now, not And here's the crazy thing. I really do see myself in the long, long, long future, especially with the new 70 series range that um, have come up recently. I see myself uh, potentially owning like a 76 when I'm older. So like, you know, I'm, I'm only 35 at the moment, but uh, maybe when, you know, the adventurer dies, um, I plan on doing one more adventurer build. Uh, I've been working on something for a while that's got a lot of unknowns, but it's basically a uh, L76 V8 um, with the V6 traction control system, so the V6 cross track. And if you follow a lot of our stuff, you'll know how I'm very um, traction control bias when it comes to off-roading. Um, I try to use it to, the, to my advantage and I try and um, show how good traction control can work when the driver lets it aid um, in ways that people don't quite yet understand or a lot of people don't yet quite understand. And you get a lot of people on the track that kind of a jaw drop when they're like, I don't understand how that car could do that um, when I couldn't do that. You know? and, and look, there's, there's lots of things, lots of factors. It's, it's not just a, there's no, there's no answer for all of it. Um, it's very situational, it depends, but my ultimate plan really is the V6 cross track, like I said, because that is the best cross track I've seen um, in the adventurers compared to the V8 one, the ones that come standard with the V8 ones, um, and an L76 um, V8, probably a six speed auto, so a 4L60 uh, um, or something like that, uh, not 4L60, sorry, a 6L80 um, or something like that. There are kits now available that pretty much just connect all up, and I think that'll be my next build when this, when this one finally dies. Uh, and then yeah, in the future, probably a, a new 76, or at least a second hand 76, probably by then, and I'll deck it out, probably still with the same camper, or if not a, um, uh, maybe a Trackmaster or something, I think it's called Trackmaster, or just a slightly bigger off-road camper, but till then, listen here, guys, um, I hope you like the content, it's what I love, and it's, it's just, just works for us, we enjoy it so much. Uh, we, me, everyone in our in our little group, and we've got such a great community following. So, stay tuned. Um, now you know what it's what to expect here.